Hello, hello, my friends. Happy Saturday. It is time to talk about the Saturday Six, which are three candles and three beauty products that I have been using throughout the week and just provide you with a little bit of feedback. A warm welcome if you are coming across my channel for the first time. Hi, I'm Katie. I am a stay-at-home mom, wife, somebody who just loves having a YouTube channel for a hobby, um, and I like to talk about candles and a little bit of beauty here. So if at some point throughout this video, you want to subscribe to my channel, I would love to have you as a member of our community here. And let's go ahead and get into this week's products. I got a, I got some good ones here. So I've got some good ones and I've got one that's kind of like, eh, I don't know about that. So let's go ahead and start out with a candle this week. And I'm going to tell you right now, we are into the month of February. Yay, right? I have jokingly said that February is actually almost as busy for our family as the holiday season. And it is because in the early part of February, um, we have Super Bowl party coming up. We've got Valentine's Day, which we don't really do anything wild and crazy for it. But I, I do like to, you know, acknowledge my love for my husband and also my children for that little holiday. And our community that we live in has like... It's kind of like a Founders Day celebration where we have a carnival and a parade. And so those activities take up a lot of our time. Um, and then the latter part of this month, both of my daughters have birthdays. Yes, their birthdays are six days apart from each other. So one weekend is, one, is for one daughter and then the other one is always for the other daughter. And so I picked up this candle a couple of months ago during um, the Black Friday sale, knowing I'm gonna burn that one in February because it would just be appropriate for it. And that would be Homeworks Birthday Cake. Now, first off, this label, love it. Love the wraparound label. It's very festive. It's kind of got that like plain white, but that pop of just, you know, the, the confetti sprinkles in there. Um, the fragrance notes on this one are vanilla cake, whipped cream, caramelized sugars, happy wishes, whatever fragrance notes you want to say would say happy wishes. I'm pretty sure that was probably just put there for, um, you know, the description, but this candle, you guys, this one smells to me. If you've ever, um, baked one of those funfetti birthday cakes. So it's basically white cake with all of the little sprinkles inside of it. That's what this smells like to me when it is burning. It, it smells like I have a cake in the oven. I think my children were actually pretty disappointed when they walked in and were like, Oh, there's not actually any cake. And I was like, no, it just smells like it. So don't do, don't disappoint people, but, oh, this one's really good. It's a very, um, I want to say like, I don't want to say generic cake scent, not in that way, but like, this is a very basic, good candle that I think would be a great base to maybe mix with some other candles, maybe another gourmand, or even, um, you could mix this with maybe like a straight up fruit candle. Like if you have like farm stand blueberry or strawberry or something like that, I feel like, um, those two might pair together very well, but it's very good just on its own. Um, there is a warmth to this. It's very authentic smelling to me. Um, not cloyingly sweet, but although I could, I could say that if you are somebody that does not like um, really sweet scents, you might not like this one as much. But yeah, upon burn, you definitely get that that vanilla cake type of note, that white cake. Um, but there is the sweetness of frosting in here. It's really, really good. I like it. Now, the wicks on this one are very thin wicks. I will say that these are like Hallmark's, you know, we've seen, especially over the last year, a variance in the type of wicks. These ones are very thin. They are carbon balling on me. Um... And you know, I, I'm, I'm tempted to trim these carbon balls off, but then I'm also a little bit scared because I don't want to get puny wick syndrome. That has been one of the things that I have been dealing with with some Homeworks candles I, that I find that if I trim them, um, even sometimes if I've just trimmed those carbon balls off, then they, um, they get puny wick syndrome. So I haven't gotten far enough along in burns. I've actually only burned this one twice so far. Um, I do only burn my candles for about a three hour stretch at a time. The only exception to that rule is usually the Kringle 100% soy. Um, but yeah, this, so you're just seeing, sorry, every time I open this, I'm like, Oh, I gotta, I gotta sniff it again. It's just habit. Um, but yeah, I, I, 
I wanna cut these carbon balls off because otherwise when I light them, then sometimes the, car the wick residue explodes into the wax pool and then that can taint the scent. As not so much usually at the top half of the burns, but as I get closer to the bottom, then I'll sometimes get that burnt sooty smell. So I don't know, but so far, I mean, I haven't, the wicks have not fallen over. Um, they are a thinner wick. They're not moving and migrating on me so far, but I'll keep you guys posted. Let me know. I, I do plan to try to do some dedicated reviews on a lot of these candles, even though they are not necessarily maybe new. Um, and that's just basically because I want to express my thoughts while I have the candles in my collection. Strength and Throw is pretty good on this one so far. I would say that it's around a seven, which if you guys have been with me for a while, you guys know that that is my sweet spot. I like it to be noticeable enough in my home, but I don't want it to be overbearing. But I also don't want to have to be like... <laughs> Is there a candle lit? I, I Seven is usually my sweet spot, and I would say that that is so far how this one has performed for me. Let's go ahead and talk about a beauty product here. Now, um, I've rediscovered this last week a blush that I've had in my collection for quite some time, and this blush is from an independent cosmetics brand. In fact, I... Um, I got hooked on them with their eyeshadow palette. Spoiler alert, the uh, eyeshadow palette from this brand is my number one holy grail. The only eyeshadow palette I have ever repurchased because um, it's extremely flattering to hazel brown eyes. I think anybody's eye color, but particularly my eye color and the formula is absolutely superb. So when they released blushes a few years ago, I was definitely intrigued. And this one I think I've had for maybe maybe a year and a half. It's one that I typically break out more during this time of year when I start to reach more for like mauves and pinks and purples. And today I am talking about the Persona Cosmetics um, little, what is this, the Super Blush. It's in the shade Carmel. Now I have been having a moment with liquid blushes and cream blushes. We know that those seem to be all of the rage lately, but there's a lot of people who still are very intimidated by that and um, still prefer a powder blush. I personally, still use a powder blush every day. Even when I'm do using a liquid or cream, I will typically layer. Now today I'm wearing this on my cheeks. Um, it is a very pretty kind of, um, I almost want to say a cooler toned, but not super cool toned um, mauve kind of color. There is the slightest bit, there's no shimmer per se in this, but it is not I what I would define as a completely matte blush. I do feel like there's a slight satin um, appearance to the blush when you have it on. Now I do have highlight on as well. So if you're seeing a glow on me, it's be, yeah, you can see that. I can see it. I always screenshot or like screen mirror my camera phone to my TV so I can see it over here. And yeah, you can see a little bit of sheen there. Um, but that is more from the highlight. This blush though is beautiful. It's a beautiful everyday blush. Um, the packaging is very simple on it, which I appreciate. There's no mirror, so you don't have to worry about that breaking when, well, I almost dropped it. Um, you don't have to worry about that breaking, but it applies beautifully. It's extremely pigmented, so you wanna make sure that you don't go in with a very heavy hand, but I do find that it is a long lasting blush. I feel like these are also priced pretty well for them being, um, I want to say they're they're part of that prestige lineup, so they're not exactly drugstore, but they're not like the highest end of prestige, where like a Charlotte Tilbury or something like that. I want to say that these blushes are maybe around the twenty dollar mark, somewhere twenty twenty two dollar mark. So, um, great br blush formula. I knew, do know that they have it in other shades, but just in particular this week, I have been using the shade Carmel and finding that it pairs really beautifully with the looks that I am using. All right. Another candle that I have been burning this week um, is from Yankee Candle. So this is one that I was not able to get around to reviewing during the holiday season. And in part, it is because the fragrance itself, even though it is classified as a holiday scent, to me, this is one that I, this is a scent story that I actually think of more in January and early February. And I am talking about Yankee Candle's holiday zest. Now this is kind of in the category of um, what somebody would probably, I feel like this is maybe their take on like an orange, an orange pomander type of scent. So for me personally, and I think I remember talking about this um, around the time that we were talking about holiday candles, I don't really equate orange um, notes with the holidays. And I think that's probably just my own personal Christmas traditions. 
around that time of year, it was Christmas tree and cinnamon. That was pretty much what I was always smelling. Um, but I do know that for a lot of people, um, spiced orange pomander, especially if you are of European descent, that that is um, very common at that time of year. And so you may smell this and associate it with Christmas. I don't, I, I associate it as just a nice after the holidays type of scent where I'm wanting some of the freshness of citrus, but um, still kind of the warmth of the spices. And so I have been burning this this week. Holiday Zest, now I don't have the fragrance notes in front of me, I'm ill prepared, I guess. But this is very much, you smell um, orange, there's citrus in here. There's some cinnamon and clove. Um, so very much, very similar to that. Now I will say that this scent is currently being offered on clearance on the Yankee Candle website. This is in the three wick, um, which surprisingly you guys, I've told you guys um, that Yankee Candle, I've had some hesitation with them because their um, single wick um, paraffin jars, just they don't perform for me like they did, you know, way back in the day when um, Mike Kittredge was still in charge over there. They That's when their glory days where I just have found that in recent years, a lot of my experience with them has not been positive, and so I just haven't been purchasing from them a lot. But I did pick this up, I believe, on Black Friday. I think I got it for like $12. This is in their three-wick um, jar, and what is this technically called? Do they have anything? It's their 18-ounce three-wick jar. I'm trying to see if it says on here what kind of um, wax this is. I have a feeling that this might be like a soy blend. Um, because it doesn't seem to be, it doesn't seem as hard and it's not doing the same type of things that a paraffin wax does. So I have a feeling that this might be a soy wax blend. Um, it's burning very well for me, very evenly. Um, I, I have heard from a lot of other reviewers that this signature collection is kind of where it's at with the Yankee Candle brand. And I actually do have another candle in my closet that I plan to start burning later on this month. Um, but the strength, Strength and throw of this has been pretty decent. I would say this is about a five and a half, six. It's not going to be a room filler, like in terms of my living room here with um, high ceilings and whatnot, but I have been burning this in my bedroom and it's been very nice. I've actually paired this with um, a candle that I finished up this week, which was um, Kringle Candles Snowbird. I've actually kind of liked pairing the fruitiness of both of these and really enjoyed that. But so far, clean burn, no sootiness going on. The wicks are performing well for me. So if you happen to come across this one, either in your local Yankee Candle store or um, see some of those in the Signature Collection on clearance online, I would say, yeah, pick it up. It, it, I, so far, so good for me. All right, let's talk about a product that I don't think is worth, I don't want to say the hype. It's not like this is a hyped up product, but um, this is just... A product that I think I was expecting a little bit more from and it's just meh to me. So this is the Kiehl's Ultimate Strength Hand Salve. All day care for severely dry active hands. I picked this up last month during um, Ulta had like a skincare sale which is similar to their 21 Days of Beauty. And I had had my eye on this for a while because I think, who was talking about this? Mm, was it Jen Phelps? I don't know. Another YouTuber was was talking about this and it had piqued my interest. And I am somebody that I use hand lotion a lot. I live in a very dry climate. If you're new here, I live in Arizona. So we have dry weather pretty much year round minus mm, late July and August when we get some humidity. But otherwise, our climate is pretty dry. I also wash my hands a lot because I'm kind of a clean freak. And um, yeah, so I'm constantly applying lotion and whatnot. Well, over the last month, I have noticed that my skin has been a little bit drier than it normally is. And um, I typically have normal to oily skin. Now this obviously, that's my face, but usually I'm always applying body lotion and whatnot. And I've just noticed that on the whole, my body has just been a little bit drier. I think that is partly um, due to the fact that I was sick right before Christmas. And I think my body is just trying to, um, catch up after that. And then also our heater has been kicking on a lot more because we have been, we have had like surprisingly like actual winter here in Arizona this year, which winter here is still spring to a lot of you guys, but um, temperatures, daytime highs, like in the mid fifties, and that's cold for us here. So between the heat and me recovering from being sick a month ago, my skin has dried out, went ahead and picked this up. 
Um, you guys, it's nothing to write home about, especially because this tube retails for $32. Now, again, I did not pick it up for that price. I got it for $16, which I feel like is more of a fair price for a good hand cream. Um, the, the positive notes about this, I would say that it is thick and emollient. It does not leave a greasy feeling to my hands. There is a slight minty note to this, so it's not completely unscented. Yeah, a little bit of like eucalyptus type of scent to it which I don't know, I guess if I were to look in the ingredients, um, there might be some eucalyptus in here. But yeah, eucalyptus, I see leaf oil in there. So um, here's what I'm going to say. I don't think that this is a more hydrating product than like my typical Cetaphil body cream, which is typically what I will apply to my hands. And then my very favorite hand cream, if you are looking for a heavy duty fix your hands, is the Duke Cannon Supply. It is their Bloody Knuckles hand hand cream, hand balm, something like that. It comes in like a hockey puck type of um, situation packaging. And I actually have found that I think I prefer that method the most, even though you are digging your hands in there, which I know a lot of people are grossed out by that. I like that then I can get to all of the product. It's a lot easier for me to make sure that like, hey, I'm not having, sometimes I have a hard time with these squeezy tubes because then like when you start to get to the bottom of the product, you're not getting as much. But Overall, I just don't find this to be like a hand savior. The Duke Cannon one is less expensive. I think you get five ounces. This is also five ounces, but you get one of those five ounce pucks for like 13 or $14. And again, this is five ounces for $32. And I just don't think that, I mean, I'll use it up, but I just don't think that it is worth the hype. And which is funny because I do like a lot of Kiehl's products. I like their facial cream um, and some of their other products, but that one, Eh, it's all right. Another candle that I recently picked up and showed you in a haul and I got right to burning it is Kringle Candles Herbal Tea. Now, I believe that this was a new release last year, like last spring. I could be incorrect in that, but I do believe that this was released within the last two years. And um, the fragrance notes on this, I actually did research and find the fragrance notes on this one. The top notes are tea and lemon. The mid notes are jasmine and verbena, and the bottom notes are musk and sage. And oh man, you guys, this scent, very much tea and lemon to me. Now this, this is more so a tea scent than, but there is that lemon note in here. It's not astringent, it's not like house cleaner lemon, it's not gourmand lemon, it's just fresh lemon with, um, with like some black tea. That's what it smells like to me. It is absolutely beautiful. There was a scent at Bath and Body Works that a lot of people have compared this to, and I would I would agree with that assessment. Um, I want to say it was called London Tea or Tea Time or something like that. I believe it, I remember something with London being associated with it. This is a very, very nice tea scent. Now I have been pairing this with Kringle's Tea and Cookies, which I am actually almost done burning. Um, and I have found that the combination of both of those has just lent such a pretty vibe to my my house in the morning time. Um, I'm very like, I'm seasonal in what I like to burn, but I'm also very like certain times of the day, I gravitate towards certain fragrances. And this one, sorry, you guys, my nose is itching. All right, I'm sorry, guys. I had to itch my nose there. I said, like, you know when you get an itch and you're like, oh my goodness, I can't, I can't stand it anymore? That's where I was at. Okay, but getting back to this candle, the um, strength and performance so far has been pretty good. Typical burn of the uh, Kringle soy, 100% soy formula. Beautiful burn, no sooting. Oh, the, the strength and throw has actually been pretty good on this one. Again, this one is in that sweet spot of about a seven for me. I've been burning it here in my living room and it does fill up the space very nicely. It's not cloying, it's not too strong. Absolutely lovely. In fact, I can see this one also being a lovely scent to burn, especially as we are heading into spring and even summertime. Um, this would remind me of like a lazy summer afternoon where you just want some sweet tea. Um, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Love this fragrance. Um, would highly, highly recommend that one. Um, I will go ahead and plan to do a dedicated review, but like you guys know, I try to um, wait until I get to the halfway point before I give dedicated thoughts. All right. And the last beauty product that I have this week is one that I never really hear anybody talking about, but I was intrigued to pick this up. I've actually had it for almost two years. <laughs> That's kind of crazy, I know. Um, I have had this product for almost two years and I think I was intrigued to pick it up because I had seen 
Um, a couple of people that I follow, I want to say it was Lisa J Makeup and Kate from The Small Things had tried another brand's product that was similar to this and I didn't like the smell of that product. Um, it was the Bumble and Bumble had a, had a product like this. But when I saw that R & Co, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite hair care lines, carried a similar product, I had picked it up and I have been using it. Now, I use it very specifically. So what am I talking about? This is the R & Co Spiritualized Dry Shampoo Mist. Now, um, like I had said, Bumble and Bumble has a product similar to this, but I can't stand the smell of it. It's too like powdery, perfumey for me. I, I didn't like it and I sent it back. Um, but this, it's a similar type of product. So how do I use it? It is dry shampoo. However, it is what I use when I have gotten really sweaty on my head, which some of you guys are like, ew, that's gross, Katie, then just go ahead and wash your hair. Well, typically I only wash my hair twice a week um, and it's mainly because I don't want to take the time to recurl it, restyle it. Um, it it's just, it's a pain in the rear. So um, I have been working out a little bit more, you know, getting back into the new year. I'm still sticking with it. And I have found that some of my workouts, I sweat a little bit more than others. And on the days when I sweat, when I've got a little bit of that scalp sweat going on, but not necessarily like I'm not dripping in sweat gross where I feel the need to completely wash my hair. I have used this and what I do is I spritz it, you know, at the roots. I also, you know, get some of that sweat underneath here by the nape of my neck spray it in there. And then what I will do is I will, um, if I've done like a workout in the evening, I will typically just um, spray it in, put my shower cap on, wash my body, go to bed and let it air dry. Um, I obviously remove the shower cap when I get out of the shower. I let it air dry. Or if I have somewhere that I need to be and I need to get ready for my day, I've worked out in the morning, I apply this and then um, I might just run the blow dryer through just for like a minute, minute and a half and it dries out the roots, but it just, it restores my roots to give some volume, some a little bit of texture to it, but it doesn't weigh my roots down. Obviously you don't want to use too much of this because too much of a good thing will weigh it down especially with dry shampoo. Um, but I've actually really, really liked this product. It just kind of brings life back to the roots of my hair. Um, I am somebody that loves full voluminous hair. Uh, my hair is medium, medium thickness, but it's very fine. And so I usually have to have a lot of products to help me out with that. But if you are looking for a product maybe to throw into a gym bag, um, and you, or you've been hesitant to use a dry shampoo on like sweaty hair that, cause that's kind of gross. Um, give this product a try. I really, really like it. Let me know what is a product that you were using this week that you have either decided, ugh, this is not worth the money or, oh my goodness, I love this product. I am always curious to know. I just want to say thank you so much for spending your time here with me today. Please don't forget to hit that thumbs up video, thumbs up button. If you liked this video because it really does help me out, consider subscribing again if you are not already subscribed. I would love for that to happen. And yes, until my next one, you guys all know the drill. I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day. Bye.